give me. I'm ready. I'm recording there, and I'm going to record on the Zoom feed now. Okay. okay. All right. So, you ready? You want to clap? Yeah. yeah we'll clap should we, on three. Should we, should we clap or? Uh, <laughs> one, on three? Yes. One, two, three. Ha! Ah. See, what's great is mine was way early, so, you know, that's because this is the stupidest. I sounded, I felt like our rhythm. We were great. We're fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. It's cool, man. It's fine. The whole hey, world's how you not doing? dying. Hmm. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna... shooting, I'm shooting up, uh, uh. Heroin? No. Oh. Uh, what's that? Uh, bleach. Just gonna shoot up some bleach. Oh, Disinfect. in your body right now. Hey, yeah. I was gonna drink a Red Bull in a few minutes, but I'm gonna drink my, um. My coffee out of my spike mug first. I'm, you buffy nerd. God. Come on, you got you got me the friggin' mug, dude. I know, I know. You have to show it off to everybody. Look at me, I like I buffy. Yeah, Ooh. I do. It's, it's my it's my. I want to keep Spike as my uh, my little my little my little boy. Look at me. Let me drink out of my Deadpool mug. Hold <laughs> did on. Did you? Did you? <sighs> Hold on. Look, it's got it's not full of pencils and stuff. <laughs> Just stab yourself in the nose. <laughs> ah! That's uh, when luckily... I was when I was in high school. So when I was in like uh, about to graduate high school, Buffy was like a huge thing, right? Because I think I it came out in '97, mm-hmm. and uh, I had my I had my like slick back hair. hair and like longer hair. So people always called me Spike because I was a goth kid, and I didn't I, at the time. I was I was really. <laughs> I was really sort of bothered by it because I was like, "Oh yeah, you know, refer- compare me to some kind of like character on a show, okay?" And now that I got older and I watched the show, and Spike was like the most redeeming part of it, despite the fact that he's also terrible. I was like, "Okay, cool, I'll take that." <laughs> hey, are we actually starting this show? Oh, uh, is this show started? Oh, I forgot we were doing this podcast and not our old one. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So wait a minute. Let no, me... it's fine. We're um, we're fine. Just we'll do it. We'll do it live. Second. It's fine. We are doing it live. Give me a second. We're gonna do this. Okay. I'm gonna need to stop at some point and yell during this so I can. I'm giving us some theme music for the YouTubers. It stopped working. No, it's still going. No, it definitely got super quiet. No, it's right there. I hear it. it yeah, great. but it got super quiet a second ago. That's your internet connection, nerd. Hey, I'm Bob. <laughs> and I'm Rance. And we're in quarantine. And, and we're also having significant issues understanding how audio works. Cool. This is the quarantine <laughs> book club. And this week we are talking about Doom. Well, we're continuing to talk about Doom Knee Deep in the Dead by Defeat Up Hugh and Brad Linweaver. You know, I don't I think he did this to us on purpose. Because Maybe read this book. Well, I can't no, understand. We did that to work. ourselves. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I I am always consistently aware of the fact that I'm likely pronouncing his name wrong. <laughs> Are you normally him an asshole for picking a different yeah. name? Yeah. That's I think that's rude and I don't No, it's cu- culturally no. insensitive. No. <sighs> because drinks upset. I don't you know, I if he was a good person, I would care. But he sucks. He does suck. I went down a rabbit hole with before, him before before I'm not sure. Well, I'll tell you about it before even reading the podcast. So last I mean, time we before got even reading the book. Last yeah. time we got together, we uh, encouraged people to read up through chapter 16 yes. of this tome of awesomeness. Uh, we also gave them some homework. I uh, I don't remember the homework. It, like a good teacher. I so now now this is the part. Like if I was teaching a class, I would be like, okay. So uh, quick reminder. Could somebody remind me what we did last time? Almost as like a refresher, and that's when the kids are all like, "Ooh, here's the thing that I talked about. Here's the thing that I learned." And really, it's because my brain doesn't work, and I just need to know where we left off because taking notes is bad. I'm not good at it. I took a lot of notes. Um, I dude, dog-eared some pages. Dude, reading this book is exhausting. Why? It's exhausting, and I hate it. It's bad. It's. I'm tired of stopping to write down notes. I, it, 
I'm I'm noting on Kindle, so I'm sitting there and having to do that awkward thing where you highlight the the page with two fingers and then like you, it, it's no no it's see so that bad. that to me seems more exhausting the actual process of taking notes I have to do it by hand I didn't write on this book because it's not worth it mm-hmm. but I um I did highlight a few things which means that once I turn seventy five and I look back at this book and I go oh remember that time I read that really terrible Doom book and I'm not going to remember why I highlighted things. But I did dog ear pages, as you can tell. One of uh, as, as to why I dog eared them, I I couldn't really because remember. you wanted to damage the book in some way, like it's damaging your soul. It doesn't hurt me too bad. It hurts, it hurts me, a lot. me more as less. This is this is where you know my priorities come together. It hurts me less as someone with significant literary research expertise. And more as a Doom fan. So the Doom, the, the part of me that loves Doom is more offended than the person who loves books and reading and stories and writing. And I think that's where you're getting more offended, right? No, no. No? No, I'm getting offended because it's... I'm trying not to, not to curse too much because I'd like this to be a clean podcast to like, you know, so I could share it with teachers and stuff like that. Um, but it's f- bad. Dude, yeah. it's a bad book. It's I want to find Daffod Abhew and I want to punch him in the face. Why not Brad Linnenweaver, though? I oh, feel I like I feel find, I want to find Brad Linnenweaver. So you have to dig him up. Dig him up, and then I want to yeah. punch him in the face. Then I want to bury him. Then dig him back up again just so I can spit on him. That's going pretty heavy, man. Dude, these dudes have they have a real problem with continuity. Several times I've noted in in my reading that. They just they talk about a thing that didn't happen. Like there's a there's a part where I'm I've read forward past our uh, reading because I I'm so mad right now. I'm so well, mad that I'm reading. Let's just it. start pouring it on. Let's just oh, chapters okay. one through sixteen. Okay. Chapters uh, one also, through sixteen of the I first need book. To, I need you to know that a friend of ours uh, of the show, one of the mats, yeah, uh, uh, texted me the other day and asked when the next episode was coming out because he didn't he he was having a hard time reading the book but he wanted to make sure that he got through chapter 16 and wanted to make sure he could read the minimal number of pages before he had to listen to the next episode um so at least in my copy um going up through 16 and the 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 print version is probably different but going up through 16 is page 121 I don't know what it is in mine right now because I'm not there because I have so, to slip through stuff. If you happen to not read yet, stop the podcast right now. Or read up through 16 and you will understand all of the. Fi- <sighs> nope. Who cares? Just listen Who to cares? us because we're going to Just talk abandon about it. the homework. Abandon the homework. Mm-hmm. It's all complete anarchy. Chaos reigns. And who cares? Look, we're going to spoil it anyway. We're going to tell you what the book's about. Have you played Doom? Yeah. It's nothing like that, bro. <laughs> it wants to be, though. I... It wants to be, and I have questions to ask you about it. Yeah, because uh, you know I'll be able to answer them. Uh, I mean, I hope so. Because, okay. wow. Let's let's start talking about who, before we, I know you have a lot of stuff you want to talk about with this. Mm-hmm. I have some things I want to talk about with it, probably not nearly as extensive as what you want to talk about. But first, I want us to talk about the main characters. Can can we not talk about the main characters first? Can, please, please. Rant. we got to know the actors. I, dude, I'm not there yet. Okay, okay. okay. I'm at the dedication. Yeah, I'm going to give this one to you. I'm going to give this one to you. Let's, let's just, let's start off with Bob Thoughts. <laughs> let's start off with Bob Look, Rage. I read a You've book. You've taken your Berserker pack. You've injected the Berserker. Because that's a smart idea to do under pressure. Like, you've injected yourself with the Berserker Rage, and now you're going to rip and tear. This book has huge guts. Do do you want to tell a different joke? Nope. Okay. I just wanted to keep going from there. Can I go? Please do. Can I go? It's all for you. Do you want me to give you a timer? Fine. No, I, I don't know. I don't know how you want me to do this. I'm just trying to help uh, what, out. All I know is that we're we're nine minutes into recording right Good. now. Good. 
and because uh, we only had 51 left. <laughs> okay. So, um, the, <laughs> the 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 see now you got me all flustered. The, I'm sorry. What is this called? The introduction to the book. The the dedication. Yeah. It is one of the weirdest dedications that I've ever read. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the first three words. <laughs> Uh-huh. Kill me. Yeah, dedicated with lust to Camille Taglia, who smokes the same cigars as Fred Olin Ray. I didn't I, look up who any of these people were. Uh, oh, I did, and cool. I'm angry at myself for doing so. Uh, can I? Can we play ten questions with this? Yeah, please. Okay, you know who these people are, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Um, first question: Is this dedication in any regard satirical? I don't know. Okay. I, that's one of the problems with it is that I can't tell. Question two. Is Camille Paglia related to one of the authors? I also can't tell. Okay. I, I know that sounds stupid, but I I did the research. I was looking all over the internet trying to find connections. At first, I thought that this was a dedication out of respect and a joke. Um, because I will say... That uh, Fred Olin Ray is was definitely good friends with Brad Lineweaver. He's a mu- a movie director, if you want to call him that. He's uh, a B movie director who writes and directs really bad movies and erotic cable movies. So um, it was dedicated with Lost. Yes. So okay. So okay. like his book, uh, his movies included sexual witchcraft. Um and. Brad Lineweaver's own Super Shark that Brad Bar- Lineweaver... Bar- um, We're going to do a little bit of sexual witchcraft. It's, it's also called something else like Horny Witches or something. Do you want to come to my house and check out my sexual witchcraft? Hang out with some horny witches with my sexual witchcraft. Okay, so... What is sexual witch... Oh, God, that was loud. Whew! What is sexual witchcraft? I don't know. Is it dedicated it's, with lust? It What's is dedicated it? with lust. So, so okay, I get the, the Fred Olin Ray thing, because he, he, every, like, image of him that you find, he's smoking a cigar. Yes. Camille Paglia. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all. Movie um, star, porn star? What? Movie star, porn star? No. She's an intellectual and uh, uh, feminist activist. Oh, oh. But wait, she's a libertarian. It goes deeper, though. According to the Wikipedia, they don't even have enough respect for this person. They say they are transgender, and the Wikipedia just constantly refers to them as she. It's like one of the last lines in the Wikipedia. What's even worse is this person isn't just a libertarian. They also support NAMBLA. No! Yeah, and if anyone doesn't know what that is, that's the National Association of Man-Boy Love. Wait, it, so... so she, she supports a pedophiliac association. She made a quote somewhere. I don't have the quote written down, so I'm, mis, I'm probably going to misquote it. Yeah, it basically fine. said that every major advancement in Western civilization could be attributed to a man and a boy sexually in a relationship. Mm. I, I'm, I'm reading about, like, because, because, you know, you did the research that was necessary for this, and I didn't. It's um, shocking. She's very, she, they, they, they are very into, okay. uh, I'm using they because there's no specific term right. listed other than, uh, well, it's kind of you do that because it does say in here, regardless of how much of a piece of garbage they may be, it says Pagley identifies as transgender and stated that she is what the Wikipedia uses, but let's say they, stated that they has never identified at all with being a woman. So it's kind to say right. they. So good on you. Like, like I think that's at least appropriate for you to I, do. I don't know that they deserve it, though. Right. Because, oh God, what a, what a monster. Okay, but I, I have a question that I need to ask then. Dedicated with lust to Camille Paglia, who smokes the same cigars as Fred Olin Ray. There are layers here. 
There are. Smokes the same cigars could also be like drinks the Kool Aid, right? Like, mm-hmm. does is into the same kind of ideas, enjoys the same kind of stuff. Is that same kind of stuff Nambla related? I don't. I that's what's scary because it's dedicated with lust. This right? is this. It's freaking me out, dude. But also, cigars is a really interesting choice. Yeah, because that is in its own regard phallic and suggestive of. Like, you know, sexual pleasure. Right. I mean, this was a, okay a, because a specific. Be- this is right around the. This is right around <gasps> the Bill Clinton scandal. Yeah, exactly. Also, she ninety five. Sp- right. This when when was the Bill Clinton scandal? Was it? I don't remember. That's actually, I think it may she, be before that. She was also very publicly outspoken about Hillary Clinton. Disliked Hillary Clinton because. Um, uh, didn't feel that Hillary Clinton was acting properly as a feminist, which we, you know, as a feminist role model, which is fine. They also um, have problems with regular feminists. I believe there might have been um, comments about Steinem's work. Um, yeah, it's so are not... they like they're they're like so so you're talking about like um like turfs right. I don't know a term. Uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists like, like yeah, let's yeah. let's be feminist, but feminism is only for women with vaginas. I, or... Dude, I don't even know. It's so bad. I just if if someone else wants to do more research because I can't, it my brain hurts. And find out and drop us a line and let let us know because I'm. It's a scary yeah. rabbit hole. Okay, so here's the other weird thing. So this this book was published between ninety five and ninety six, right? Mm-hmm. But the tapes revealing the affair didn't begin to get recorded until ninety seven. Okay. So I think it's only coincidental that we make the connect. I, I I mean, right there because the minute that you said it, my brain started going there too with yeah. the cigar, right? But also. If we're not looking at this as a reference to some kind of like libertarian horror horror at the at the the, the the liberals, it's also a really insulting sexual reference back to Camille Paglia because if they identify as transgender, it's right. also a very like um it's a very typically um uh, sorry I'm umming a lot I'm trying to think of the right the right way to put it's this. fine I'll fix it in post fix it in post. It's a very typically misogynistic way to refer back to women in the sense of like using a cigar as a manipulatory object. I, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's it does it goes down this hole, and I think the part that bothers me the most about the dedication is the with lust part. Yeah, it's creepy that's and that's weird. the key. That's the weird key that doesn't turn the tumblers, but you need that key to get into this to get into this this vault. So just keep that in mind as we go through the book. Okay. Because I can't, there's no more that I can say about it other than it was horrifying and disgusting and is now tainting, I said taint, it's now tainting everything that I read when I'm reading this book. It sounds like a real, that's that's a real like um, proto Larry Correa statement. It, it is. It's... <sighs> And for those of you who don't know, Larry Correa is we, we we refer to him affectionately or with hatred as uh, Big Papa Big Papa LC LC Big Papa and LC Larry Correa. If you if you're unfamiliar with him, he is a fairly popular writer currently. He's written the Monster Hunter International series. Uh, what else was the other series that he wrote in like 1930s? Um, oh gosh, uh, hard hard boiled spell- ma- magic. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't know. I off the top of my head. So we used to really like Larry Correa mm-hmm. when we just read his books, and then we started going down the rabbit hole of like who Larry Correa was, and he's just this super outspoken libertarian asshole. Yeah, and it's so hard to separate. And I'm happy to say that. Like if Larry Correa read saw this and he wanted to come on here and be like, "But I'm not an asshole." Oh, dude, you're you're an asshole. Uh, just see, I'm it's coming out of my mouth. Larry Correa is an asshole. Big Papa LC, I love you, Big Papa LC, but you're terrible, terrible to people. I don't care if you live in a ranch in Montana, where the hell you live. You don't know anything about coronavirus, even though your online blog, which looks like garbage, <laughs> might suggest that you are. If you want to go to MonsterHunterInternational.net or whatever it is, learn all about how Larry Korea thinks all about COVID-19, you can do it. 
Also, I, this guy puts his own face on the front of his own stupid books. There, there was Man. that. There definitely was that book where his, his face is on a muscle-bound <sighs> barbarian warrior. That's and cool. And it sucks because I like his book. I know. I, I love his. I love most of his writing. I don't Other like... Other than the most recent Monster Hunter International book, oh, which is uh, Hot Diarrhea. Uh, there was also, <laughs> also the books that he writes specifically for Audible, the Tom Stranger series, which are usually like free, but they're just basically... Uh, libertarian propaganda in this guy also sci-fi would, format. Have you ever have you have you gone uh, down the rabbit hole of the sad puppies movement? I've uh, you've told me a little bit about yeah. it. I'm I'm afraid. God, we're I'm what I'm sitting. This here is with, why this is why libertarians suck when it comes to like these books, dude. Because they're such whiny babies. I've got my book sitting on page one they here. Smell just like, read it. They smell like gunpowder and shoelaces. And I don't like the way I whatever. Uh, let's okay. just go. Let's just get to the book because okay. I'll, so now let's talk about your characters. Ra- okay, let's talk about our characters. Part one, characters. Hey, Flint Taggart's a marine. Hey, he's he's the best marine. I love the Semper core. Fi. I, live, I live for the core. Semper Fi. I live for the core. My dad might have been a drunk. Uh, he was in jail. I don't know if that's reading too far ahead. Spoiler alert. Who cares? Oh my god! Also, my friends call me Fly. It's if you, you only call me Fly if you're not mad at me. If you're mad at me, then you. Th- <laughs> but he did go to Catholic school. Cool. Now, so he's got a lot of. He's got a lot of. He knows. He Catholic knows about. Guilt. He's got a lot of Catholic guilt. He knows a lot about. Religion, I guess, or so he thinks, and he I always guess. refers to himself as "yours truly" because it's written in first person, right? Well, that's the first mistake. <laughs> I'm gonna because I'm gonna... these. The, I feel like these two jackasses. They flipped back and forth, mm-hmm. and like one would write a, a chapter, and then the other one would write a chapter, and they just give each other a synopsis, but then not actually say what was actually done in the chapter. <laughs> so then they go, "Uh, hey." Guess what? Remember when I killed that that demon that's laying on the floor there? What demon? There's you just you kicked the demon that was who killed that? I don't know. Last thing I knew, you shot a zombie. Good job. I have I have a problem with uh, so uh, so I go back and forth between their capacity as writers to successfully write in first person. Um, and then, like, there's times where I'm like, oh, that was really great first-person narration, and then there's other times where it's garbage first-person narration. They do an awesome job, I think, at times, of actually establishing Flynn Taggart as a character who has some body, right? Uh, he I like, sure loves body. He I'll loves, he does love body. I'm giving a bit of a doubt for a second. So... I, I love his his voice. I think they do a really good job because, well, obviously this is a book in which at least the first 120 pages, there's almost no talking. Mm-hmm. There's no dialogue because he's by himself. Mm-hmm. He's got to go into the hangar and then the toxin refinery and then the Phobos lab and the command center because we have to slide in all the all the names of the levels. From- is it in level order? Yes, it is. It is. <sighs> I was wondering that. Yep, a, I, like is. That's one of my notes in there. It is, and and there's all these references to specific rooms in the original Doom that I find interesting. He, uh, the one that mm-hmm. jumps out to me is he talks specifically about. Uh, I'm trying to find the um, uh, the computer room on page 86. Phobos Lab was dark. Phobos Lab stank like an open sewer. But if there was anything left of the original installation here, then medical supplies had to be near at hand. If they hadn't been left in the typical condition of guns and radio sets. Um, it, in the game, Phobos Lab is surprisingly dark, and also he mentions at the very end, to exit the labs, I had to enter the darkest room yet black as coal. I wasn't surprised. This was at the north end of the installation, where after groping in the dark by touch and even daring to use my tiny pen light, I found a small opening. This led down a narrow corridor to a tight metal spiral staircase going down, way down. I started to get very dizzy, spinning around so many times. The very end of the Phobos Lab, E1M5, is remarkably dark in the original Doom, um, as is the, a lot of the level, but it is this tall room with all of these strange-shaped walls and a bunch of shotgun zombie hit scanners. 
So not only is it hard as hell to see what's happening, other than by the glowing eyes of the enemies, but getting around it is an absolute mess. So I, I really liked that because I was like, oh, these guys play Doom. They know the game that I'm playing. Do you think they played Doom? Or do you think they were handed a synopsis of each of the levels and what was important about the level? Or, I mean, do you think they, they were given them Doom and uh, they, like a couple of f***ing babies, played their way through the lowest difficulty level just so they could figure out what the game was? Uh, maybe so. But I do think they, I, regardless of that, they did play it, I think. Okay. There are, uh, there's one part that I, I loved in here as a, I, and I, I do say I loved it because I thought it was clever. Um, I'm going to read something one more time. On page 92, he's talking about, and this is where Flynn Taggart as a narrator I gets really clever. Because, well, granted, he could also be just sort of the, this could be just the authorial voice coming in here. Okay, I'm on page, give me a second, uh, page 92. For me, it's Re 92. I don't yeah, know read 92. it, because I want to know if our, our pages um, line up. They weren't pitiful wrecks that looked human, though dead inside. They weren't the spinies or metal skulls or ghosts either. The ones making snuffling pig sounds gave me the creeps, that part. Not not there. Okay. I'm nowhere near there. <laughs> so he talks about why these creatures are mindlessly attacking. And if there's this moment in here that is so metatextual. He talks about why they're not attacking in an organized format. He says, The intelligence was there, just well hidden. Even without the talking demon, the alien technology itself was proof of a mastermind. I, I do. Actually, that is close to where I am. Say that. Well, give me again. Sorry. So, I, you're good. You so why didn't the ninety two? Yeah. So why didn't the intelligence simply organize the monsters and zombies into a naval search pattern and be done with it? Why were Arlene and I, Arlene, the other main character, um, why weren't Arlene and I being allowed to play Gypsy, entering one level after another, shooting it out with pretty much the same cast of characters, encountering the same hazards, and beating them over and over and over again? Maybe it was all a pre-invasion test, or worse still, a sadistic game. But test or game, it had to be teaching the enemy mind something important. The important question for the survival of the human race was, what the hell was I learning? I hated to admit it, but so far the answer was not much. It's this interesting callback to... This is based on a game where you do the same repetitive stuff over and over. Yeah. Can we take this process of repetitive stuff that's being done over and over and turn it into blueprint is something actually like reading a book about an unorganized enemy force attacking a, a fo uh, you know this lab is there something we can actually do with that plot wise and they do as we know about it from books three and four right they right. do and this this becomes a model for something else that happens later and i i liked that bit of foreshadowing because it felt like to me that they actually did have a direction in mind when it came to this book. That they thought they were going to go somewhere. I don't think they actually thought they were going to go the places they go. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you'll be damned if you can forget that you're reading a book about Doom. Right, right. Because the whole time, that's all. we're just reminding you that you're playing Doom. Not only that you're playing Doom, you're playing a game. This is a book based on a game. We're going right. to make video game references. We're going to tell you about stuff. You could just be playing Doom. You could just play Doom instead of reading the book. In fact, uh, I know it'll probably hurt our uh, listenership of five people, but uh, just go read the books. I mean, go play the games. Go play don't the go, games. Don't read the books. These books are bad. I I don't... I'll defend <sighs> them a little bit. I'll defend them a little bit. I can't anymore. After after going back and rereading them, I can't. Uh, I had... So okay. I had... I, I have, I I have steamrolled this, by the way, so I'm so sorry. Um, it's fine. I want to let you go, go back to what you were going to talk about. Okay, so page one. I'm right off the bat... For, <laughs> Page, or I should say... The, I'm jumping the, to 92, and here you are. Page one. Uh, this is actually page... Uh, yeah, it's page one. The 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 first page of the introduction. Uh, the It's just called Before the Beginning. Mm, is this where he spells Kafiristan the wrong way? There is that. Uh, what's a dirty war? Let's go ahead and maybe explain the terms that we're going to use. If we're going to say dirty war, tell me what that is. I Did don't know. Did you look that up? I don't think I did and didn't find anything. I, I lost some of my notes. I get the feeling, and I, I don't know exactly what it is at the top of my head, so I'm just going to take a guess. But my presumption is a dirty war is a war in which, I mean, all wars are dirty, right? Yeah. But a dirty war is not necessarily a war that's based on political ideology or it, it's based on some kind of um, 
insurrection, some kind of uh, – uh, maybe like 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 dirty money switching hands, so it's like um, almost almost using a military as a mercenary force. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, uh, I mean, cool. like conce- conceivably so. Some people could say something like Vietnam was a dirty war, right? Like we had intent to be there for very political, like uh, very advantageous reasons, but maybe we shouldn't have been there. Okay, I I, I don't know. I I'm not saying that as a story, and I'm just using that as an example. Well, uh, so. That's a good example of their inability to express things to the reader in a way that is functionally useful. You can throw me a term, that's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and drop, because I've been reading the books lately, the name of another cool libertarian author, Jim Butcher. At least what Butcher does every book is... He gives you a slight little recap of the important things. Like, if he introduces a character that's important to the series, he'll give you a paragraph of background about that character. He'll say what's, like, if there's an event that happened that's important, he'll tell you, he'll explain what that is. These guys don't do that because I don't think they understood what writing a mythology or uh, was about. Request. They, re- request. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have to be real careful with Jim Butcher. Why? Because I really like Jim Butcher. <laughs> I do too. I'm not. I'm not busting on Jim Butcher, and I'm not busting on his writing at all. I'm, I'm no, using no, no. him as an example yeah. to say that he does it. He does it well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, homeworks. Talking about homeworks, and this example that I'm making for you right now. My homework last week was to ask readers how many times the use of Lieutenant Beazelbub came up. Yeah. In the book, after he calls his commanding officer, Lieutenant Weems, once at the beginning of the uh, on page uh, three, he calls him. uh, Sorry, no, it's page. Yeah, page three calls him Lieutenant Beazelbub. Um, How many other times does he use that throughout the book? It's a big fat zero. Yep, He never does it again. He and he talks about this guy a lot in the first couple chapters. He does. I you had me laughing because last week, um, when we assigned this, I was up to like page ninety five. And when you asked that question, I was sort of thinking, "What is Bob going with this?" Because I don't remember him saying Beelzebub anymore. Because he except, doesn't. He because doesn't. it's <laughs> it's what they do throughout the whole book. They drop a thing and then they Beelzebub. just go. Uh, whoops, sorry, forgot about that part because so, we don't know how to write a book together as two people. We're just two f***ing dumb shits. What that is is just something that could be cut out with editing. It's like just, just if it's never yeah. mentioned again, just erase it. Like just redline that thing, get it out of there. It's oh. five words we don't need anymore. I want to look up who the author is and I want to talk to you, right? not author, editor. Whoever edited this book. They're dead. It's You, fine. you, this is your fault. You let this happen. You let these two dipshits just talk back and forth to each other about fun, stupid ideas and then never complete any full thought. It's like two fifth graders were were writing a story about their favorite video game and then mommy just went, okay, I'll put this on the web. It's bad fan fiction. That's what this trash is. It's bad fan fiction. The first two paragraphs of the book, and we're, t- we're this is still on the, um, this is still on the, I just scratched my butt, by the way. This is still on the, um, the, the Kafiristan is spelled wrong page. The f- second paragraph is full of the most garbled, unnecessary, pseudo-intellectual, pseudo-historical, semi-political garbage. And this is not how you start a Doom book. No. Kafiristan is about as close as you can come to hell on earth. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a that's a reference to Doom. I got my thumb <laughs> on the red button Doom knowledge. <laughs> I say that with authority. I've spent the last 18 months doing a tour here, trying to keep the Kafiri People's Liberation Army, who call themselves the Scythe of Glory, from the throats of the rightest Korostast... Korost... 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 Who have the backing of Azari transplants from the South, who want to keep their enclaves, who are fighting a dirty war against communist Cuban and Peruvian mercs. <laughs> Jeez, you get the Wait, picture. mercs? Yeah. In my version, I... 
Oh my god. In my version it says Mears. M E R E S. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> We're gonna <laughs> Mears. That's so Mears. That? Yep. Uh look here, look here. Um look here. I can't uh really find it. Do you see it, Mercs? Uh no, up a little bit. There it is. Yeah. Yep. Mercs. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a cool. it's a snarled oh. skein of a million hey, bloody threads up here on the top of the world in the northern extension of the Karakoram Range between Afghanistan and Samarkand and the Uzbekistan. Like, uh, I, you vanished. You're vanished. you're now Doom Violent J. <laughs> 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 you gave me genital warts. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> you did it. Good job, man. Can't wait so everybody sees my cool green sheet hiding it's behind like, me. That is the most exhausting first paragraph. And it does nothing. No, it's stupid. It does truly nothing. I am a fan of exposition. But at no point ever in the rest of this book does any of that come up or is it even essential. And it's truly wasted words. That... That's 90% of this book. I feel like... Which is a shame because the book is only like 220 pages anyway. They could have taken whatever this one and the next book are and probably just slapped them together in, into one book. Because I'm I'm starting to go through here and I'm looking at... I... There's... I'm afraid we made a mistake, dude. No, we didn't. We're fine. No, I'm, we made a mistake because... Uh, I don't there's know not much there's, to talk about. There isn't because it's just such garbage. No, there's uh, yeah, keep talking, keep talking. It's not talking. there's no substance to it. Yeah, it's a video game book, but I can't talk about character motivations because there are none except uh Flint Taggart wants to get his willy wet with his best friend. With his best friend. Oh, I'm going to keep reminding you that she's my best friend. Oh, well, she's just my best friend, but uh I just, still want to uh, do her. Uh, character, okay, character analysis. Of Flint uh, Taggart? Does he have a southern accent? No. I head? want him... He probably should. I He does in mine, but it's not a strong southern accent. It's, it's like... A, it's just a little bit there, right? Yes. Like, he, he talks... yeah, like he's a country boy accent. Right, right. Like, it's, it's not like... It's not like talking like this. Like, it's no. not like, yeah, I'm gonna smoke a cigarette and uh, bang my sister. Like, I gotta get in that. <laughs> Instead, it's more like he just got a little bit of a southern accent. So he's a. It's almost like it just comes in now and then. Yes. Uh, yeah. When he's talking, but like like when he's when he's when he's sucking vacuum and watching restricted <laughs> flicks in the uh, in the in the in the rec room. That's it. There's terminology. I think one of the authors has a good grasp of what Flynn Taggart's internal monologue is, and I think yes. one of them doesn't. Yes, and I think his mat- his maternal monologue, Jesus, his he's, internal monologue. He's a mommy. I'm Flynn Taggart. Uh, uh, little baby, Flynn Taggart, I'm your mommy. <laughs> really shines outside of the action sequences, and when that author, whoever it is, and I, I have a feeling it's Brad Lynn Weaver, because I want to give, I'm going to give dead Brad a bit of credit. Yeah. I, I Especially because it's those times as well where this book sounds Heinleinian in in tone. He he had high expectations and hopes for what this writing was. And it's good to have lofty goals. Yeah. But he just dropped the ball and it, he and his good buddy Daffy, they So are we suggesting that all the good parts, the good sparks of possibility in this book are uh, Brad Linda Weaver's doing and not Daffy of Hughes? Yes, let's be kind to the dead. Okay. Knee deep in those deads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fist deep in this guy, this dead guy. Is that with your berserker fist? Yeah, clearly. When you, when you, when you inject... I'm talking about punching bodies of the berserker okay. pack. Okay. Um, uh, so what else, what else you got going on? What else uh, are you thinking about? I, because they're... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, can we go to? Can we just let's just jump to chapter one? We'll, let's okay. give some real quick. Uh, uh, I know awesome. we're all over the place, but That's chapter funny. one, he they go to they go to a just like in the Doom Read Me, they yeah. go to this uh, country, uh, this war. They're surrounded by what he believes to be innocents. 
Yeah. And uh, his commanding officer commands their company to open fire. And the only way he knows that he can stop that command is to punch this guy out and issue an, a counter command. Yeah. So he punches the guy out, but the guy doesn't have a glass jaw. And so they put Flynn under arrest and go ahead and murder all of these uh, innocent people. Which, if this was Heinlein, mm-hmm. that would be there would be a larger statement there, right? There would be a larger, more powerful statement about the the wasteful mercenary quality of uh, American military, mm-hmm. and about like the 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 military machine and the military industry, I, like uh, you know, a la Starship Troopers. But instead, it's just a plot tool. <laughs> like, there's, it doesn't yeah. go anywhere beyond this. He barely ever talks about this ever again. It doesn't even remotely affect Flynn Taggart in there's, any psychological yeah. regard from this point forward. No, it's a plot point. Yeah, it's, it's all it is is a tool to springboard him from here to Mars slash Phobos and Demos. That's it. Like... You would think later on in the book that maybe there would be some further talk about protecting innocence. Why? Because I didn't do it then, right? Or or a little bit of character regret. Or I made an impulsive decision to take out the leader of, uh, you know, to, to, to take out my commanding officer but not resolve the situation. God, I feel guilty. Like literally there – because he talks in here that there are children who died. Yeah. Like the, the, they're monks, right? That the, These right. innocents that they fire on are monks. And that they find body parts of children in there. Flynn Taggart never goes back to that ever again, at least where we've read. Like, this doesn't no. even remote. Once again, it's an opportunity that just poof, yep. poof, drops. Um, uh, so, so they then get immediately shipped out to Mars with no consequences for their actions as a, as a unit whatsoever. Is that, is that what the this is about? Is that is there, because, spoiler, his in entire company gets wiped out when they transfer to Mars. Is this is this supposed to be punishment for them for what they've done? Or am I giving them too much credit as authors? Nope, no, 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 no. Here's the problem I have with that too. So they fire on all these innocent civilians, right? And who are some of the characters that are in his platoon on Earth when they fire on the innocent civilians, right? You're I think you're going the same place I am. It's there's Weems Mm-hmm. Gates, uh, Arlene, yeah. who Arlene Sanders, who is like the um, the deuteragonist of the book, like she comes back up uh, mm-hmm. where where we stopped reading. Um, Gunny Goforth, the Rons, the Rons. If Flynn Taggart is the one who got court martialed, right, or right. whatever, and he was sent as punishment to the Mars base. Why did all these other people show up on the Mars base too? Because he's not sent to Mars as punishment. They, they've are they deviate from the story right there, and they go, "Hey, guess what? Uh, we got assigned to Mars, but there's no time to punish you and court martial you, so we're just going to hold you in custody." And why throw him in a brig on Earth? Why did they take him to Mars with them? I don't understand it. It's stupid. There's also and and. Ugh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like there is, there's, if obviously, if there was like a military professional who was in the Corps or something like that that could come in and give us some insight on this, that'd be cool. But I don't even want to suffer that for them. Uh, it's just, it just feels bad. There's never even a, a clear explanation. The fact that you had to explain that to me, and I did read this, mm-hmm. means that I didn't give enough of a crap because I just wanted to get to the places where Flynn Taggart was shooting apart corpses. Well, yeah, and let's jump forward to that then. Let's go ahead and get rid of. He goes to he goes to Phobos. He cleverly talks his way out of detention with the Rons, but by you punching know, them. But you want to know what it is? So they get to Phobos, and he's in detention. And while they're there, some stuff in the gates, right? Some stuff goes happening with the gates, mm-hmm. which are these structures they discover on uh, Mars, Phobos, Demos. Um, Demos has already disappeared, by the way, and we don't. We don't talk about that in the in the books, really. No. I don't remember reading it until he appears on Demos. He, he goes appears the on gate. Demos. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Right. You would think if a moon vanished from the air, 
That'd be like a big deal. We'd be like, oh, we're going to Phobos. Guess what? The sister based Demos disappeared. And Weird. in the, and in the original read me and in the in the text, that's right there. It's present. That's actually the thing that starts like triggering them off to some weird stuff's going on here because a whole moon disappeared. The, one of the biggest failings of this book, if I can even call it that, is that they rely so much on the readers knowledge of a uh, read yes. me file. I feel like that's part of it. They 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 like they're like well, you play Doom, you read the read me file, so you know what's going on. You know about Demos base and all this other stuff. We don't need to use any details. We'll just when it happens it happens. Who cares? <laughs> we're we're really good writers. Piss off. The thing that makes Flynn Taggart mostly upset is not even that the radio is going wild or that people could be hurting. But on page 15, when he starts hearing the screams come through the radio, it says a number of things happened at once. More screams and gunfire came over the radio. And I thought I heard a woman scream. Oh, no. Look but out. That lady needs protection. It's all in italics, right? It's all in italics. He's more bothered by I thought I heard a woman scream than in any regard with the original situation where children were being gunned down <laughs> like that didn't he's, uh, oh god he sucks he they all sucks they all sucks that's they good all, they good. all suck uh, and then and then two pages later and he's afraid that this the scream is his friend arlene sanders yeah. Uh, at that moment i thought that mars might be the last beautiful sight i would ever experience ahead lay nothing good the thought that I might shortly die didn't bother me nearly so much as the dread of letting down my loved ones, dot, 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 again. There weren't that many back on Earth, Look but there out. was one here on Phobos that meant everything to me. Maybe I did love her, I couldn't say. Uh, I didn't mean that literally. What I couldn't say, I could Jesus, I can't even read. I couldn't say it with her. What? Okay. Maybe I did love her, I couldn't say. I mean that literally. I couldn't say it with her hooked up with Wilhelm Dodd, the dirty bastard, but that didn't mean crap. If Arlene were in trouble, then putting my life on the line was the easiest choice I'd ever made. Doing my duty didn't mean that I had a death wish. It meant that I would have to stay alive as long as possible to find her and hump her out. All right. Oh, yeah, you want to hump her in. out, all right. <laughs> yeah, all he cares about is getting with Arlene, right? And he's constantly, every time that there's a mention of Arlene Sanders, who I'm going to venture to say is a far better character than he yeah. is. Like, if they did anything well as writers, it's that the minute we meet Arlene and that we see Arlene move forward, she's constantly pushing back against her own perception in the reader's eyes and in Flynn's eyes as just a piece of ass. She's super capable. She... uh is smarter that she's the smart basically the smarter of the two right she's the she's the uh, tactician of the two and not in that way where it's like girls are smarter than boys and the boys do all the physical work uh she's a better soldier than fly is um she's survived a hell of a lot longer and more effectively than he has he's a he's a doddering idiot in the first hundred pages of these books She's found all these clever ways. She's, like, guiding him through with marks on the walls, and she's leading him to all these weapons. Like, she is this tool by which he survives, which I think is really cool. And I like Arlene as a character as we find more and more about it her later. Like, she has, she's fleshed out better. She loves reading science fiction. Um, she oh, in- she does lo- love reading science fiction because we're science fiction writers who got to include she- some of that science fiction in this book. References to that. Maybe one day our book will be great. Do you think? Do you, do you think that maybe Brad and we were definitely if you made the lady read science fiction so that way they could think about her when they were by themselves at night? I gotta think about Arlene Sanders. I, 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 I there's Flynn Taggart is the world's biggest white knight. That bro puts on a fedora and miladies all over the place. He's gonna he's yeah. gonna smoke his vape. He's gonna come up. He's gonna open. He's gonna open your door for you. Don't worry about it. He's gonna he's hey gonna baby. protect you from the bad monsters. Hey baby, you wanna come over to my house and eat some chicken nuggies? 
oh, don't worry about it, though, because, oh, you got a boyfriend? I'm your best friend. I love you way better than he ever would. Wilhelm Dodd's just a piece of garbage. I got all the, I got all the nunchuck skills you need to stay alive. I don't even care about Wilhelm Dodd. He might have pushed me down when I was a kid, but I don't care. He's such a big, he's a big pizza face. I don't care about him. You know, if, if me and Wilhelm Dodd had a fight. I wouldn't even fight him. I'd walk away and show how much of a better man I am. Come on, Arlene. You know, you may be my best friend, but I still want to hump it out with you. Don't worry about it. But I mean that in the military sense, right? We're friends, but I, but I, I could... I could love you so much better than he could. I'm like you, Superman. Do you think? Do you think maybe when all this health stuff is done, we can maybe get hooked up, hitched? Do you want to hump it out when health's over with? You can call me. Everybody else calls me Fly, but you can call me Fly. <laughs> I just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought with you'd the call deep, me with the- FL. Let's cut out one more letter. Fly. That's how much. That's how much closer we are. You just call me Full Tagger. I Ooh. had a I had a real '90s moment when I was reading this too, and I remember this a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> the name okay. Sanders really bothered me as her last name. And why? Because I think about Dion Sanders, but then I think about something else. And do you know what that other something else is? What is it? Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and what do you? What about it in particular? Because because Colonel Sanders, he constantly refers oh. to her as PFC Sanders, yes, which is like KFC, KFC Sanders. Oh, but, I, I made a note about that in, okay. in the second part of the reading. So that's one thing that happens to me, but I have another one that goes even further than that. Okay. I can't help but hear the last name Sanders without thinking of the commercial with Dion Sander Claus. Do you remember Dion no. Sander Claus? No, I so don't. So it was it was this like I, I don't even remember the reference, right? But I remember the, like Dion Sanders did something where he dressed up like Santa Claus. And there was this joke about Dion Sander Claus. And so now all I think about when I see Arlene Sanders' name is Arlene Sander Claus. And I'm waiting for Fly at some point to be like, What's up? Arlene Sander Claus. And to like make this deep cut reference to this joke that only I give a crap about. But then I can't know. take anything seriously. Also, can we talk about how garbage the names in this book are? Mm. William Gates? We know that name, right? I, I'm on that page right now because let me read this part. Let me okay. read this part. Oh, Please do. Hey, I'm going to make a sick reference for you from video games. <laughs> Note is probably going to get it. It's a deep cut. Uh, real clever. If we were if we were on the internet, this reference would be known as the deep web cuts of the internet. Uh, when the fear snake slivers around inside your gut, is that it's poop? pretty damned easy to just start squeezing off at anything that moves. Then I recognize the shape as one Corporal William Gates. Keep talking, cool. man. I'm 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 invested. <laughs> No, you were you were doing so good there. I know. Hey, man, I'm, I got to get back into the voice. Hold on. Bill, I shouted, relief flooding me in contact with a fellow light drop. What are these terms like that he uses so bad? That, that jaggies. I just, it's Talk it's the jaggies light drop. The, the, it. the fear snake slithers around inside your. That gut. sounds like poop, right? Just start squeezing off at anything that moves. Oh man, the fear snake slithering inside of me. I got these hot ropes slithering inside uh, of me. <laughs> he was one of the monkeys who jumped on my back when I popped weems. <laughs> like, I, I, like to, I like to pop some weems. <laughs> Keep going, because I have, I have another one of his moments of like bad jargon that I wanted uh, to highlight. Bill had a very distinctive face with eyes spaced wide apart and a scar that ran from his prominent chin into his lower lip. Does Bill Gates have a scar? No. I mean, he's really in the news now, and I don't remember seeing a scar. Nope. Um, I do remember him. I, fa- I, uh, I found this. I found the page, by the way. Okay, please read, because I. Um, and oh, uh, this was so. This is chapter two. Basically, um, he escapes from the Rons and finds his first uh, zombie, which is Bill Gates, and that goes into chapter three. Okay, I have a really picky thing. Yeah. I need to look up the term really quick. He talks about why Gates is stumbling around, right? Oh, f- okay. Oh, while you're doing that, um, yeah. You keep you keep searching something. 
I'm going to okay. go forward a little bit. It's uh, talking about this this Gates thing. Yeah. Um, all that kept racing through his head over and over was the word zombie, zombie. He he just comes up. That's the first thing he comes up with. Out of his, he's like, oh hey, guess what? Uh, this dude's a zombie. Don't worry about it. I'm I don't. He just looks like a guy I know, and he smells like uh, sour lemons. But he's he a zombie. F- oh god, how many times does sour lemon show up for you? I didn't by the count. Way. I lost. Uh, it's count. it's it was over ten. Once we hit ten, I I was done. I was done highlighting. What a I, crappy I, way to describe how something smells. Mm-hmm. Let me just open up my fridge and grab out the. Every lemon is sour. <laughs> right, right. It's there's no sweet lemons. It's like uh, they smell like cleaning products. Sour lemon. Clean zombies. Sour patch kid zombies. He talks about how uh, with Weems. He's, he's, I'm mean, sorry, with Gates. He says, um, you, right, uh, that scar. He was walking in an erratic manner, I assumed. Men in combat situations can get very weird, and I'd seen plenty worse than this. Battle fatigue might have even explained the strange words coming out of his mouth. Stuff that sounded like an old horror movie. We haven't used the word battle fatigue, the phrase battle fatigue, to refer to PTSD since World War II. Like, there's been lots of iterations of battle fatigue, right? But it's making me think that Fly Taggart or um, Bradlin and Weaver and Defeated Pew have no idea actually what battle fatigue is. Yeah. Slash PTSD, right? Like, this seems more like he's talking about shock. Yeah. Than Battle. F- that's not battle fatigue. But that's what I'm saying is I don't. I didn't. I haven't looked up whether either of these guys have military. Experience. No, of course not. They're fat. They're fat libertarian dudes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being overweight. It's totally fine. I totally understand. But, but I'm. No, they're not. They, who can't? Who you, you know, know how? You clearly know how they can, don't. Clearly yeah. they don't. Because this book sounds like garbage. You know how I can tell you how they don't. Um, it's because when we get further in, uh, after he's looting. Gates' body, and he says, Gates only had a single spare mag, and the one in the rifle was dead. Still shaking, I reloaded the rifle, dropping rounds left and right. How do you drop <laughs> rounds out of a magazine? Uh, he, I think he's, 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 wait, read it again. Gates only had a single spare mag, and the okay. one in the rifle was dead. Okay, single spare mag. Yeah. The one in the rifle is dead, so I don't need that so one. So he took that one out. And is putting the other one in. Dropping rounds left and right. Right? Can you read the next part? Uh, and crept on, wondering who would come running at the sound of me murdering my dead chum. No, but what was the what was the part about dropping rounds left and right? I reloaded the rifle, dropping rounds left and right. He didn't reload the mag, he re- reloaded the rifle. They don't know right. how magazines work. Right. You have to put the, the rounds inside of the magazine and then if put you it said, in the rifle, if, yeah, right? if you said I was reloading the spare the mag, mag yeah. fine. But don't right. just say I was re- I reloaded the rifle, right? Just right. Dropping, uh, dropping rounds. And what is this? Door. Some what is this? Some lever action rifle where you shoot and you like put the the rounds I, on the side. I <laughs> don't understand how a sig cow works. No, uh, it's a gas operator, right? So is it? He a, says is he it says semi automatic. Yeah. So he says a semi automatic gas operated infantry combat weapon. Oh, it's right um, there, idiot. Yeah. But it's like gas operated is. I, I actually hate that phrase, gas operated. So, so when it's I was M two eleven. When I was a kid, when I read this book, uh-huh. you now we grew up in a in a household with a lot of firearms, right? Log guns, log guns. I read this when I was in seventh grade, and I thought gas operated literally meant like here's a gun, pour some gasoline in it. Oh my god! Don't judge me, okay? Because it's not like this idiot explains to people who might not know anything about guns. I know every, I knew a lot of stuff about guns, and I didn't realize that you didn't pour gas into this gun. This is why I don't shoot anymore. But gas operated was like, it, like you know, when the when the the bullet fires, it works the action. Like yeah. uh, that's the way I mean. Any semi-automatic like an, like an, works. Like an AR. Right. That yeah. it, uh, 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 the gas blowback forces the next yeah. round to feed in. Not mechanical. Right. G- gas. Um. Also, uh, just looking at the name of the Sig Cow, um, the M two eleven. I was trying to find. There's a there's an army truck that's an M two eleven. There's a highway that's an M two eleven. So this uh, is clearly a made up that, rifle. Do you know that truck uh, is also gas operated? <laughs> oh, cool. Joke. So do you think he's like walking around with a big truck? 
I that's stupid. Eventually, he let's is. Not, let's not. Oh, let's not God. continue going down that path. Um, you talked about jargon, right? Yeah, I that, can't believe really bad at it. I can't believe that you talked about the zombie, zombie, zombie part in chapter three and didn't get to this. And I need to read this because oh, please. I think about it all the time in my head. I, I had to pick not, and choose what I made notes on because there's a lot of them. And not a day has gone by since I started reading this piece of hot garbage that I haven't thought about this line. <clears throat> I stared, shaking like a California earthquake. I was looking at, at a zombie. That was all that kept racing through my head, screaming the word over and over again between my ears. Zombie, zombie, zombie. That's the line I was talking about, yeah. Keep, oh, just keep, just keep waiting. Just keep waiting. It's at the end of this paragraph, buddy. What utter shit. Maybe Arlene could believe in all that crap and bull roar. She watched those damn, damn horror movies. Damn, damn horror movies. Those damn, damn horror movies all the like. I, I wasn't never going to watch. I wasn't never going to watch. When all of a sudden did he take on like this... This colloquial Southern... That's the, that's the Southern thing, yeah. I was never going to watch anything like a freaking zombie. I was crazy, bugging, freaked like some hippie punk snot flying on Belladonna. I was is, crazy, bugging, freaked. That, freak out on that Belladonna. Like some hippie punk snot flying on Belladonna. Hi, Cattail. Hey. Hippie punk snot. Flying on Belladonna. No! Oh, because that's so, what we that's what we hippies use. We use Belladonna. Freaking out like some hippie punk snot flying on Belladonna. I'm flipped out freaking hard on some hippie punk snot flying on Belladonna. I'm a hippie punk snot just flying on Belladonna. Whoa! I'm a hippie punk snot just flying on Belladonna. I'm a hippie punk snot just flying on Belladonna. Are you flying on Belladonna? I'm flying on Belladonna, bro. There's a lot of spit on my screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds so stupid. Oh, man. Dude. We've... You realize we're on page 23 of 100... We're not even talking about pages. this book as a book. We're just identifying it's fucking painful to read. I want to get to books three and four because that's where I think this shit really opens up. It's and not going to be better, no, bro. That's the problem. Me. You think it's going to be better because you remember it. You remember that this book was awesome as a kid. It's not. It's not good. It's never going to be better. We're going to do this for the next two months of our lives and hate <laughs> ourselves. And everybody else is going to hate us. And nobody's ever going to listen to our fucking podcast because we're going to do this. Dude, you're crazy bugging freaked out. Like I'm crazy bugging freaked out. out. <laughs> <Bella Donna. laughs> Who chooses Belladonna? Is, I mean, is that a reference? What is that? To, what even is Belladonna? Belladonna? It's like a, 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 I don't know. Can we look that up? Because I feel like I'm being a real idiot and not identifying that maybe talking like that phrase, hippie punk snot flying a Belladonna. Might oh, yeah. Like no, there's definitely to, uh, Belladonna, uses and side effects yeah. and warnings. Um, Belladonna punks. tincture or Belladonna leaf. Yeah, Belladonna it's... is a plant also known as Atropa Belladonna, blah, 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 blah. Belladonna has been used in alternative medicine as an aid in treating arthritis pain, <sighs> colds, hay fever, bronchospasms caused by asthma or whooping cough, hemorrhoids, nerve problems. I got <laughs> hemorrhoids from Belladonna. I'm a hippie it. punk snot flying on basic demulsifants so I can feel slightly bitter about my asthma. It doesn't. Oh my god. Uh, I don't. Side effects. Let's see our side effects. Um, Feeling slightly sleepy? Drowsy. Maybe? Tachycardia, palpitation, dizziness, nervousness, urinary hesitancy, and retention. Uh, I'm so crazy hippie, couldn't pee. This is a Beltana. I'm a hippie. Punk snot flying crazy on. Why couldn't he say LSD? Uh, decreased sweating, constipation, increased ocular tension, photophobia, blurred vision, mydrasis. I don't even know what mydrasis is. Um, you're, you're, get, get, you got a my, mydrasis. I got a mydrasis, so I'm going to make sure that Lieutenant Weems knows. Fly to Belladonna. I, I don't even, I'm sorry. I, I've lost all direction with this hot garbage. I'm going to, I'm going to, okay. Chapter three, he shoots that guy. He shoots yeah. some other zombies. 
in oh, chapter three. Oh, he just three. continues. They get to the point where he's ta- there's not even any action in the book because he's just like, I went through the next room and I shot a bunch of zombies and I was getting real good at it. And then um, eventually he finds the princes of hell. Hey, right? I need you to know something, though. Yeah. Abrupt- abruptly, I realized why the zombies' eyes were so dry and their vision was so bad. They never blinked. When did he ever talk about their vision being bad? Like that's the thing is it's because be- they shot they shot terribly. I they guess couldn't shoot. Uh, they they shoot. Maybe it's they because they're well friggin' zombies. Later, and anything. Uh, oh, wait, does- okay, here's one of here's one okay. of my favorite terrible sentences from yeah. this chapter. I closed my eyes when I squeezed the trigger. The gunshot snapped me awake again. I jumped up, slid the sig cow into ready position, and backed away from the undead dead. The undead, dead. the undead. I would back away from. Also, for as hardcore dead. a soldier as Fly Taggart is, he's closing his eyes when he shoots. Like that seems like some. I don't close my eyes anymore when and if I shoot in the rare times that I do. Right? Why is this guy closing his eyes when he's shooting? Do you have a death wish? I'm not even a. So- Here's I'm Rance gonna, telling you how to soldier. Okay. I'm gonna flap through some of these parts in these chapters real quick, just to let's, just to give you some shit that I'm just, pissed off about. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh. Also, in uh, this chapter, I'm trying to, there we go. Yeah, In chapter three, still, at one point, he says, uh, first compact, contact with the zombies, and they'd rolled over, and to coin a phrase, play dead. He spelled it R-O-L-E. What? Yeah, page 27. Okay, 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 what? Um, <sighs> I might soon be the only living hum- human on Phobos. Thanks for that, by the way. I realized I had little faith in the guards I'd left back in the mess hall. First contact with the zombies. He's talking about the the Rons. They'd roll over and to coin a phrase, play dead. Mm. That's not how you spell roll over, guys. It's R O L L, like like a dog. I, I can't even find it. I trust you. I trust you, man. I trust how garbage it is. I'm just curious to know, like, if it's if it's. Uh, he's constantly talking about how he's not a team player, but he loves the Marines. If there's anything <laughs> that fight. right, if there's anything that screams Marine, it's it's being a team player. <laughs> Roll over and to coin a phrase, play dead. What page is that on? Page for me, page twenty-seven. You know what's funny? It's also page twenty-seven for me. Okay. It's at the very bottom. What's your first line on that uh, page? Seeming to see me for the first time. That's on the previous page for me. Okay. So our, our page distinctions are somewhere like they're, mid. They're close. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. I just wrote that it's starting to get annoying, the amount that he talks about Arlene. I think we All should do a time. full book. We should do a full book count of how many times he refers to Arlene and her sweet, her sweet body. Yeah, and I was gonna say each time he talks about Arlene, you have to make a reference back to her physical appearance, right? Like how good her body looks. Like I wasn't looking at other soldiers; I was just checking out Arlene's and, body. Uh, doesn't matter uh, if somebody's dead. I don't care as long as I don't find Arlene. I don't think I can handle it if I. I don't care if I see other dead bodies. I still want to see my friend Arlene, but mostly I just don't want to see that body dead. I want chapter, to see it alive. Chapter four, he uh, starts. Uh, he's uh, ran into two more zombies at the beginning of that. Um, uh, there's a zombie little uh, girl. <sighs> they keep saying stuff about Phobos, fear, fear, fear. Like they're talking, which is dumb. Yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah, they start. He starts really talking about the levels here. He's talking about the dynamic of lighting effects in Doom at one point. <laughs> a single strip of hellishly bright luminescence flickered on and off, high in the center of the ceiling. They were the people from Doom were probably like, "Yo, we got dynamic lighting effects. Can you please talk about that in your book?" I'm please? mostly bothered that when he talks about the Pinky Demons, he doesn't talk about how they're uh, really uh, they have a hard time navigating stairs. <laughs> Which, if you play the original Doom, you know to trip up a trip up a pinky demon. Oh, just give me some hot, uh, hot, hot loading screen tips. Hot loading screen tips. You put this one on your loading screen. Don't like pinky demons? Just trake them up some stairs. I don't even know what trake means. Just trake them up some stairs. Trip them up. Trake don't like up. stairs. I trake those demons real good. You could you could take care of them in two full shotgun blasts. Or maybe three, but most of the time we only you gotta use three because we don't 
we don't understand how bullets work in this game. So you got to do two shotgun blasts when you're real good. Oh, or like the zombies, you can kill them with two to three pistol blasts or one to the brain pan, as the readme says. But what's really funny is that you can't pick and choose your shots in Doom because you shoot along a single... <laughs> A single, a single okay. plane, it's, and it just hits whatever's up or down <laughs> For, on its above. Own. Mm -hmm. All enemies are are infinitely tall. I like how okay in chapter five he finally meets his first imp, and he's so adamant that they're not demons; they're extraterrestrials. They're not demons. Why? Um, because there's no such thing as a demon, but um, uh, there can be zombies. But there's no demons. It's fine, dude. Just. And then later on, he finally admits that they're demons and just... Because why? Because Arlene tells him so. Just Arlene's going to tell me. Watch this big wink I'm about to do. <laughs> they're not demons. They're, I, <laughs> We're going to find out what they are later. Um, <clears throat> he goes cool through. If, if, if anybody listening to this is like, but Rance and Bob, why haven't you gotten to the plot of what happens in this book? Because there's no plot. Point A, he gets to Mars. Point B, demons appear. Point C, he kills all the demons. Point D, there's a lot of throwing up. He's constantly throwing up. He throws up like four times. <laughs> For a guy who never gets to eat anything, he throws right. up a lot. Point five, he takes a swim through toxic waste. I'm not sure why that seems like a good idea, but we're not even going to reflect on that. Point six, he fights princes of hell, which are big minotaurs. That's the end of episode one. Point seven, he goes through a gate, appears on the other side, and meets up with the love of his life. I mean his best friend. I mean, uh, a, not a really woman. great, a really great marine with a I great mean, figure. I mean, a completely modestly dressed woman who he's not at all remotely attracted to in any regard because he respects her space and her needs and her autonomy as a human being. I mean, Arlene Sanders. I mean, not just. I'm just. Do you want to hear another cool one that I got for you Please here? Please do. Um, hey, Brad, Brad Lynn Weaver and Daffod uh, Daffod and Pugh at one point say that uh, there's there's no south or north, uh, north or south on Phobos. Um, that's actually not true. Most most planets have poles. They have a basic arbitrary like designation of what yeah, is poles, north and what is south. Poles right? are based off of the rotational axis, except for Uranus. And I don't mean literally <laughs> Uranus, the planet Uranus, um, because some planets don't have magnetic well, poles. So they base. We just happen to have a planet where our magnetic poles are based around our north and south. Well, we also have a like regardless of whether or not there are poles, right? Yeah, we you would just pick north we would and have south. well, we would have an arbitrary understanding of where is north, and where is south, because that's how. That's like basic, like, I don't even know, man. Like, they're going to, if it's humans on Phobos that created this base, they're going to have a north and a south, right? Yes. They're not going to go, guys, I don't know. Let's, go, uh, mm -hmm. let's go to, let's go to A place. Why A place is in a different place than B place, but we can't call it north or south. Why? One of the last major things I want to talk about that infuriated me reading this book was the flashback sequence. The flashback. Uh, yeah, yeah, so when yeah. we go back to first meeting, um, my best friend, not love interest, wink, wink, Arlene Sanders. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're going to have a William Tell shooting contest on a Marine base. Are you kidding me? That's a thing that, no, that would never happen. That would never happen on a military base. Everyone would get court-martialed for... Uh, participating in an activity like that every human being who knows how to use a gun knows you don't use another human being as a target or even downrange you just don't do it it's the stupidest thing i've ever read oh how, it's gonna prove how tough she is <laughs> just uh she's uh, let, some, let somebody shoot an uh, apple off her head and then she shot it off of his head it was, was cool it? she's a tough lady i'm mostly upset that flynn taggart didn't actually take him like 
part of that. You know, like maybe he could have put his head there and not put an apple on it and just said, I need you to aim five inches lower. Bro, are you mad at him? Is that why you're calling him Flynn? Because only his his friends only call him Fly, <laughs> unless they're pissed at him. Are you pissed at him? Because I'm f***ing pissed at him. I'm pissed at this book. I'm pissed that I'm reading it. I'm pissed that I've got another d- <laughs> week of reading it. <laughs> they, they Do you also notice that they never, ever, because this is a book for, I guess, teens. Babies? It's a book for babies. Babies and idiots. The F bomb is never dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, on page one fourteen, after he after he um, he kills the um, Hell Princes, <coughs> um, and he goes through. There was no way this st- was standard issue. He talks about the. Um, he says, uh, "Turning a corner, I was greeted by a sight not calculated to reassure a man doubting his sanity." What? A gigantic skull, half the length of a full-grown man, glared at me through empty sockets. It seemed to be made of brass. I stared into its eyeless sockets before allowing my gaze to lower. The giant metal skull had a tongue, a curving, snaky metal tongue. There was no way this was standard issue in a UAC refinery. Of course the skull's tongue had to be a lever. I can't help it, I said. I'm a born lever puller. Is that a joke, or...? No, I mean, it is. He thinks it's funny, and he uses it again multiple times in the book. I'm born you know lever. Is that, is that like, a, is that like a, this? Is it like a reference to, like, I'm a born no, lever puller? No, I think he's just, I think he's just trying to be clever. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, curiosity, I, I, curiosity killed the fly. Like, <laughs> uh, you know what else pisses me off is when he talks about how he's not lucky, except that he's lucky as hell. Luck has never been my long, my long suit. It's all it's skill. Never, uh, except for the whole book. When every time he gets into a situation and he thinks about a thing and then that thing appears on the next page. Mm-hmm. Oh, I really wish I had a shotgun. Oh, shit, that there's zombie's a shotgun. got a shotgun. Um, at oh, the begin- man, I wish I had a rocket launcher. Oh, man, there's a rocket launcher. At the beginning of the Phobos base level where he's like, I was just really cool leaning on a locker and then I fell into it. And there's an AB-10 machine gun inside. Yes. <laughs> oh, but I was never hoping been lucky. to get that machine gun. At that least one, it, that one time, that, that that gun that he just walks past. Remember, he goes through this whole thing where he sh- he like he uses his rocket to kill a whole bunch of zombies, and then it turns out that like there's other zombies, so he doesn't get the machine pistol that he wants. But I then think, it's there like two pages later. That's where that's where he place. finds it. Yeah, that's where he, it, like like Boom. I think that's the thing about this that blows me away is that they're almost so faithful to the way not just the game but the way the game is. Uh, is uh, it, 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 uh, what's the word? My brain is falling apart. The way the game is um, structured, structured, uh, realized, uh-huh. right? That in Doom, you pick up a shotgun, it's just laying around. Uh, you pick up a chain gun, it's just laying around. But when you translate it's, that into a book outside of a video, trap. outside of video game mechanics, it's so dumb. Why does one of the demons look at him at one point and says, gosh, are we having a ball or what? Is this supposed to be this intelligence working through the demons? I'm gonna, I want to come back to that. I want to come back to that in books three and four because this is where I think they're doing some good foreshadowing because that's referenced sort of again later on. Man, I wish we could just spoil it because – I don't you can't you can't spoil it because it's still bad but at least it gets away from being doom this and like into some weird like we really want to be Heinlein weird stuff um how I'm gonna, is it that it, when he goes through the I'm I'm I pushed all the way forward to chapter 15 that's fine that's where I'm at now too how does it when he goes through the portal the 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 gate and he ends yeah. up naked because that's what we do here is we got to put our make our protagonist and his lady friend naked when they um, meet. How is he naked there? But the transporters don't make you naked. Wink, wink. Uh, I actually know exactly why. See, you're not thinking about pff, being a real you're being a real noob right now. Right? I, I feel like it reading this. Being book. a real noob. Let me tell you why. OK. I got I got to give you some visuals while we're here. There's a difference between a gate and a teleporter, Bob. And if you remember all the way back from Doom. Mm-hmm. We need a reason 
okay, as to why you start a new episode with just your pistol. You're naked, okay? Okay. You start right. a whole new game. But when you go through a teleporter, you don't lose your stuff. Right, I get it. I get what you're saying. You know, I so, appreciate so that. So the gates, so the gates, mm-hmm. so there's, there cool. like, there's, there's this, there's, like I said, there's this, like, deep dedication to the source material that is almost stupidly accurate. Like, you start, you go from episode one to episode two, and you don't have, you start the next episode with just your pistol, right? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Um, that's just the mechanics of the way the game works because the game was broken down into episodes based on your shareware and all that kind of garbage. But you go through a teleporter starting in episode two, and you don't lose your your guns. So, what was that face? Were you making fun of me or? No, no, I was just thinking about how. Because you're an idiot. Because you should remember game. that. No, look. Oh, God. What? Here's the other. Really here was the other thing I was off. heading towards. This book. Is this pissing book me off. is pissing me off, dude. But your inability to remember the smallest. <laughs> Um, Come on! I didn't. <laughs> I didn't spend my youth jerking off to Doom. Okay. Uh, well, I spent my youth jerking off to Castlevania. <laughs> I wonder if there's Castlevania books out there. Uh, Bob, Bob, I believe there may be a Worlds of Power book that maybe. is Castlevania. Okay. Cool. You're probably right. Uh, um, so where no you... one dies in a Worlds of Power book, and if you don't Good. remember, if anybody listening to this. Uh, doesn't remember Worlds of Power books. Well, then you're um, not my friend. You're not my friend. They were they were basic kids books. Ba- There's a Simon's Quest Worlds of Power book, Bob. We're on it. <laughs> that we're, we're doing. It. We're doing um, it. Even better if it's written by really bad. Um, let's see. Um, if you're writing a Worlds of Power book, you were probably a bad author. Yeah, uh, Worlds of Power. All these books based on Nintendo games. Uh, There's bases loaded. You know. That's probably about as interesting as this book that we're reading right now. I'm trying to see if this. I'm trying to see if you might be like a really bad libertarian person. Why? Okay. Why if? Why if? Flynn and Arlene went through the portal and they ended up naked. This other guy, Johnny, uh, went through the portal. The one that was lying on the sink cow. He wasn't a zombie. He was a guy who'd gotten killed by demons. Why was he not naked? Can you tell me that again? Because I zoned out because I was reading too much about World Power Boy. Okay, so <laughs> Flynn goes through the through the portal. Yes, one he goes the, through the portal. One of the first things he finds is uh, the body of one of his former squad mates, Johnny, yes. who's lying on top of a sig cow. Johnny's died shooting like like fighting. He didn't die a zombie. He died as a human. <clears throat> right. Why Why is he not naked? I think you might have just found the found the the key. I is think the key found... is the key that this book is stupid. It's the, I keep no saying continuity. It. There's no, there <laughs> isn't. Oh, and then uh, just I, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm saying that because I can't give you an answer on that. Like, like of course it's dumb. It's just another tool by which he can find a gun laying around. Also, of all guns that you want to pick, okay. This is one that's not even in Doom. In Doom, right? Like it's, but it's the one that the that the zombie soldiers walk around with this big box gun, right? Which is dumb, because, and the same with the AB10 machine pistol. I get it. He doesn't find a Gatling gun because Gatling guns just really aren't laying around, and you can't just carry one in your teeth, right? Do you also like? The fact that there's a reference, there's a there's a veiled reference back to Wolfenstein 3D in the book. There's with so the, many references with the, not, to with the swastika he finds uh, on the ground. The swastika, which is which is in the game. Yeah, which is well, it's back. Bef- um, um, he back also back. worries that he's going to c- turn a corner and that a shoe stoffel is going to be there to shoot him. Because guess what? That's in Doom. At one back. point, there's secret levels. Uh, just so you know, the swastika is only in the original Doom up until I think it's like uh, Doom version 1.666 because they had to remove it because it was very offensive. Um. This book is offensive. Um, can we talk before we stop about the meeting between Fly and Arlene? Because it's truly the first Please, time that he that's has. That's what like... we're getting to. Yeah. The whole book, and I have to say, I do have to say that the book changes when you yeah. add dialogue. It becomes a different, much more readable book. Yeah. The next couple Be- of chapters past sixteen are so much more easy to there's like. Actually, st- there's actually story, character development, and like. Like, Arlene being introduced in the book, 
is the only thing that makes it remotely readable. When I say remotely readable, it's still hot garbage. But it's no longer just 114 pages of Fly Taggart doing dumb shit. Right. At least his dumb shit is reflected off of another, like, There's functional... another it's semi-intelligent human being to tell yeah. him, don't do that, you're stupid. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but for... of course, a... even that becomes a joke, too, because we're like, oh, a lady told me not to do it. Better listen, you're the boss lady. <sighs> wink, wink. I also like that he, he doesn't, he knows who Rudyard Kipling is on uh -huh. page 121. He knows who Rudyard Kipling is, but has no idea who H.P. Lovecraft is. <sighs> is that getting too far into the book? No, it's fine. It's through. That's it, next time. And it's through sixteen. Oh, drop, is it? Okay. Yeah. Drop the gun. Oh, right. The oh, don't, don't drop put the Kipling freaking. At me. Drop the freaking gun. Oh, uh, you drop the freaking gun. You drop the freaking gun. You Let's drop. Can the we do? Can we do gun. a dramatic? Can we do a dramatic recreation of when he finds Arlene Sanders? Yeah. Yes. In, absolutely. Um, but I don't want to read it. I want us to do it together. Oh, like, I was just. I thought it'd be fun to read it. Too. No, we'll read it. But I want to do it first so it sounds stupid and then read okay. it how it is because then it's just as stupid. So, All right, who are you so going to be? Um, it doesn't matter. Okay, who's first? You can start. So you got, I, I'm going to press I'm going to press the secret wall because I see light coming through the wall. I'm going to press the secret wall. And when I do so, I'm blinded by light. So I raise my gun and I realize that the person in front of me, okay. I'll point a gun at you. Point a gun at you. I'm going to say, Oh my gosh, you got a gun. Drop the freaking gun. Uh, you drop the freaking no, gun. You drop the gun. Or no. You drop you it. You drop it or you're going drop down. The, drop the gun. Uh, if you don't up. drop that gun, I'm going to drop you. I'm going to blow your dumb old head uh, off. Your drop, butthead head off. Drop the gun, damn it. I'm going to drop you're, the gun now or I'm going to make you into blood paste on the wall. Uh, if you don't drop the gun, I'm going to drop my pants and show you what that's all about. Drop the gun, man, because if you don't, I'm going to probably ask you to drop your pants and we're going to totally agree <laughs> on a consensual relationship between two men right now. Uh, drop the gun. I think that might be illegal because we're related. Drop your gun. So good to see you. Hey, what's up? So good to see you. We're friends. We're totally platonic friends. Totally, okay. totally brothers. Don't don't aren't interested in each other's bodies at all. Uh, <sighs> <sighs> oh man. So, How long so, does it take you to realize that somebody's not not? Hmm. Right, like, and also, he's been thinking about Arlene this whole time. So he right. presses this wall. He finds Arlene on the demo space because he wall. finds Episode everything two. that he wants because he's lucky. Because right, the a bloody naked figure held a gun pointed directly at my face. By reflex, I shoved my own piece right between its eyes. Drop the gun. Drop, Drop the, the freaking, freaking gun. Put it down. I swear to God, I'll blow your fool head off. Where I can see them, put your hands up and I'll move her ground on the ground. Move her eyes. Her eyes were alive, and she spoke words. But now we both stood, each pistol pressed against each other's face, eyes wide with fear, wonder, and hope. Was it? Could it be? Could she be? Shouting at the top of our voices in pain, rage, and desperate need. My hammer was cocked, but my finger outside the trigger guard. I had just begun to suspect. Just begun. Something clicked in my brain. The penny dropped. <laughs> I recognize the bloody, disheveled, pallid creature. A dream come true, if true, in a world that specialized in nightmares. Painting before my face, watching warily, ready to fire off half the magazine if necessary, stood the reason I had come this far and hadn't yet given up. You haven't heard another human being this whole time. You would think that if this is your best friend, you know that voice. Like, even, okay, you're looking for a, a lady, right? Two, you're looking for a tough lady. Three, you should know your friend's voice. Four, you don't have to have this whole conversation about blowing each other's full head off. The minute you hear that voice, you're like, bro, hey. Hey, you're alive. It's us. Cool. Hey. It's us. I don't want to do me. this anymore. You're me. So I'm just Fly and there. Arlene find each other, and they don't, oh, they don't do that. They don't, don't worry. They don't, they no, don't. because they're just friends. We're, we're good pals. Pl platonic. So here is my homework I want to give out this week. 
to my lips so they could face you face kiss you faces. Here's right, the so you can actually you can actually um do the homework along with the audience so that they Yeah, I did it this time. Okay. What are you trying to say that I don't do my homework? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm dealing with that a lot right now, okay? I'm going to finish the book. Okay. We're going to finish Knee Deep in the Dead. Yeah. Um That's the homework. We're going to finish this book and get through it. Okay, because together. It sucks. Together. We're going to get it together. Um I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm already Can we just delete podcasts? Like delete ideas from our head. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just delete <laughs> I think um, that maybe we made a mistake and <sighs> No, so so we have to get through the end of the book. So 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 the <laughs> the um the next it's the next hundred and thirty pages or so is by next week. You can um, do it. You, yeah, we, we can, can do, do it. it. We it, can all it gets, do it. It gets better. Um Yeah, that's all. That's all I want. I have no I have no other I don't want to count things. I, I, don't I think we should things. keep I think we should keep try to like mentally keep track. I don't mean like physically numbers. Just think about how often he, now that he's met Arlene, how much he he desires her. Yeah. And how many pathetically sad white knight bullshit things are said and done. And that it's clear that our, our authors are grossly misogynistic and making, they're making, basically making the literary, literary equivalent of women can't drive jokes is this a it, okay so the question i now have for you to consider for next week and a, a point of discussion i want to bring up after we finish the first book um is this a product of the authors being these libertarian asshats because we see this in all these other libertarian uh, helmed books right like larry correa does it a lot even yeah. the early jim butcher books like uh, Harry Dresden was the biggest white knight until right. he gets to about like 2009, 2010. And it's almost like Jim Butcher had a, had a, a, a revelation that mm -hmm. all of a sudden these female characters didn't just need to be useless, useless bodies to put and, things in anymore. And that, and that almost the character itself makes the realization. And he goes, look, I, yeah. I believe in chivalry, but like, holy shit, I'll punch a lady if I got to. Yeah. And then like <laughs> he changes, right? Yeah. So is this, and, but we see this with other, these libertarian. Not that that's, not that that's what, I'm saying. Well, you want to you want to punch some you want to punch some ladies. You don't want to So is that a, is that a product a byproduct of this these libertarian authors and their perspectives on women? Or is it a product of like the early 1990s when this was written? Uh, I think it's both, dude. And and I think that's the thing that we should keep an eye out for in the next reading, honestly. Because I, the, I have a the feeling that this... objectification of the character right. and the idea that she is, as much as she is a capable, complicated woman, that there is still this weird... It's like the objectification while yeah. attempting not to objectify. Like, hey, I'm an okay dude. I don't objectify women, even though women are hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm really interested uh, knowing knowing having read books two, three, and four, and knowing what goes on with Arlene later on. Like I do mm -hmm. think there are these hints that come up later of like the authors almost seeming to grow and recognizing the limitations of their first book. Mm -hmm. um, because spoiler alert, as far as I remember, Fly and Arlene never become a thing. Yeah, and ever and and once we get past book two, there's not games to rely on anymore. No, no, and that's it's, that's where I actually think it grows a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it tries to. It doesn't get smarter. It gets broader. Yeah. Uh, it tries to be smart because it does try to bring in all of these like sci-fi elements, um, that are way more Star Trek than Star Wars. Yeah. It's yeah. not this stumbly. It's not this. It's still doddering and stupid, but it's not as doddering and stupid as even the first book is. Even book two really diverts uh, divert uh, di gets away from <laughs> the simplicity of the games yeah. um by going especially by introducing other characters in book 2 we get um Albert Gallatin uh we get Jill um these other characters who have some autonomy in this world and who affect Fly and Arlene in more human ways yeah and I think I am excited to get to those because I do, as I remember, 
I, I do remember the first book, even as a kid, being like, okay, it was good. Like, it did its thing. But at least the books two, three, and four have other characters that we can get a better idea as to who Fly is and who these other characters are in the world. Because it really yeah. does get fleshed out with other people, with other motivations, and with other conflicts happening. Yeah. Sorry. And Sorry. No, you're, no, you're great. I mean, it's... it's Just suffer through exactly book Exactly right. One. Suffer through book one. Books two, three, and four are equally bad, but at least they've got some redeeming qualities of trying to be stories that are being told for a greater purpose as opposed to just regurgitating shit in a video game that you could just play. I hope so. I hope so because I am having a hard time. I, I look at this... Finish book one. Just finish This book thing one. That, we, that we have created, and I... It's be, it was very daunting this week. Are you having fi- ex- existential crisis? The, yes. Getting yeah. Close. This was supposed to be fun. Yeah, it's not. It's not fun. It's not fun. So finish it's... book one. That's all we're gonna do. <laughs> That's called um, homework. Actually, or don't book or one. don't finish it and just listen to us be upset about finish it. Finish book one, and next week, I'm gonna quiz you on book one. Me or everyone? You. you. Okay, cool. You. All right. Can we have an actual questions like? One through ten questions. I'll do. Uh, I'll do my best. All right. Let's make it. No promises. Let's see if we can create. Maybe I'll come up with a quiz for you. Maybe we'll create a cahoot. Or yes. Something like that. Yes. Can we? Can you, yes. There is nothing I love more. Okay. As a teacher, than mm-hmm. creating a cahoot, and watching fifteen to twenty young people scramble. Like Lord of the Flies, to be number one in that Kahoot, and in the process, also secretly playing that Kahoot and beating all of them because <laughs> I know all the answers. Of course, wow. that is one of my favorite pleasures. Like I'm like I don't know, I don't know who this person is, but man, they're really doing a great job. Dis- <laughs> and then at the end, being like, "It's me," but Which you I'm told sure- everybody the secret now. Well, they. Who cares? Also, they know it. Like, the first time I do it, and then I never do it again, right? But, like, also, kids, their energy, their violent, angry, rage-fueled energy about cahoots just carries over into me. And I want to just watch blood pour. I want to watch them, like, like thumbs in the eyeballs. Like, you could not answer that before me. Does a, coot, does a cahoot disappear? No. Is it a time thing? So we can leave it up and people can, can just yep. keep... Okay. But I demand that anyone who plays the Kahoot must listen to the music on Kahoot the entire time. Oh, yeah. Uh, we may... We may have... Um, I may need to prove at some point that I have actively looked for my own personal listening pleasure remixes of the Kahoot quiz music on my phone. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> because, no, it, dude, no. if you... Okay, so if anybody out there is not, is not familiar with Kahoot, it's, it's, a, it's an easy quiz-making tool, right? And it's visual, and then you can, like quiz your friends with it and it's become really popular in um uh in in classrooms because it's free to use but um i mean come on man 10 hours of this on youtube let's hit this up oh my god i gotta make yeah You, are there people who are like Kahoot? I mean, Kahoot. I think pe- I think people get friggin' like what I, if it makes me psyched? What if somebody redid the Kahoot song like an original Bobby Prince Doom song? I would love it. I'm gonna look up Kahoot remixes this Kahoot. week and make that next week's theme remix Doom. Let's see, let's see. There's got to be the internet has it right. Um. Uh. Yeah, I don't see anything like Kahoot remix. Oh, Kahoot remix MIDI. People are just like, why am I just listening to these idiots search things on on? I don't. Uh, I don't know why I'm listening to this idiot search come things. Come on now. Yeah, I can't oh, find it. Who know, Who knows? Man. I mean, come on, man. Check out this. Check. 
it went away. Doesn't like it. There it goes. This is a jam. This is my jam. Oh. Why is there glass breaking? <laughs> okay. This is my that... jam, man. Just get. You know what? Mm. Fuck Doom. Love Kahoot. Also, drink yourself into oblivion and get funky, funky, freaky fresh with a freaky fresh hippie punk snot flying on Belladonna. Okay, I'm out of here, man. I'm going to go um, probably cry myself to sleep in the shower. Cool. Uh, once we're done there, lament the fact that I haven't drowned. <laughs> and then I'm going to continue reading book one of Doom, Knee Deep in the Dead, a fantastic new space opera by Def E. W. Hugh and Brad Linaweaver, R.I.P. Then I'm going to go shoot a golden cannon, which is not a reference to my private parts. It's more a reference back to Brad Linaweaver when he was alive. Then I'm going to play Doom... But I'm not going to do that. I'm um, just going to smoke a cigar, the same type of cigar. As Camellia Pigalia. Yeah. With lust. Nambla. Love you. Love you too. I uh, hope you're quarantining well. Hope you're taking care of yourself in the midst of uh, the sickness. That's right. Everybody out there, hot winks. <laughs> I've been Bob. I've been, I've been Rance. And this has been the Quarantine Book Club. And if you'd like to find us online, check out our website, www.thequarantinebookclub.com. You can find us on Facebook at The Quarantine Book Club. You can find me on Instagram at D-I-T-S Tech. Uh, if you want to drop us a line, ask us some questions, whatever, check out our website. And um, there's ways to send us some emails, ask us questions, hate mail. Please do it. Also, if you I, I, I know I know for a fact uh, we had at least two listeners out there uh, mm-hmm. this week. If oh, you we're have, also on YouTube. Yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we are. you can watch these hot these hot episodes uncut and live and look at our dumb faces as we're so zooming. Dumb faces. Um, if you also if you have any questions you want to ask us about the books that we can do our best to answer, we'll do it. I'm not telling you get an expert opinion on it. Because these books are terrible. But if you have anything that you're curious about or an observation that you want to make or even a sequence that you want us to talk about, please do so. Because, yeah. frankly, I'm already f-ing exhausted about this we're, garbage. And I don't want to think about it anymore. swimming in toxic waste I'm right now. absolutely I- just barely read the rest of it and mm-hmm. still find a reason to talk for an hour and a half about it. Yeah, next week. exactly. And and if, if you have something that you want to hear, let us know because it'd be like throwing us a um, – environmental suit just don't be a hippie punk snot flying a belladonna later cool i'm gonna stop stop the recording